This video is about giant covalent structures. Now as well as simple molecules, covalent bonding can also create giant structures and there's three that we need to know about um, for C2 and that is diamond, silicon dioxide and you might also see that written down as silica and finally graphite. Now the two on the ends, the diamond and the graphite, are both made solely out of carbon but their properties depend on how those carbon atoms are arranged. So diamond is made up of carbon and so is graphite. Silicon dioxide, on the other hand, um, the clues in the name is made out of silicon and oxygen. And the name also gives a hint to the fact that it's two oxygens with one silica, because you've got silicon dioxide, where di means two. So these Giant covalent structures have very different properties to the simple molecules um, that have covalent bonding in them as well. So these lines again represent a strong covalent bond. And those can be seen and same for the graphite as well. So again the single line representing a strong covalent bond between the molecules. So you should be able to look at these and recognise that they are giant covalent structures. So because they have strong covalent bonds in their structure and the fact that they are giant structures means that they actually have very high melting and boiling points. So that's different to the simple molecules like oxygen and um, chlorine and ammonia etc that have very low boiling points. The giant covalent structures, think about giant and relate that to being high, they have high melting and boiling points which makes them very hard and very um, difficult to break down in the case of diamond and silicon. Diamond is composed of one carbon atom bonded to four other carbon atoms. So we could represent it like this. One carbon atom bonded to four other carbon atoms. And it's this structure that makes it very hard because of the covalent bonds that exist between those this carbon and the four other carbons to which it is bonded to. Silicon dioxide composes of a structure whereby the basic units are a silicon atom bonded to two oxygen atoms and finally um, graphite you can see by looking very closely at the structure so if you get one of these questions just take your time to look at the structure you can see that one carbon is bonded to three other carbons And with these carbons bonded with three other carbons, you can see that graphite forms layers that are free to slide over each other. That's why you can use a pencil, and it will leave pencil. Uh, it will leave a um, line on a piece of paper because it's the graphite layers sliding over each other. Graphite is um, 
what you have inside your pencil and it is this structure exactly with one carbon bonded to three other carbons and that can slide over each other those layers can slide over each other allowing you to write and leave the graphite residue on your paper so these are the three um, giant covalent structures that you need to know about diamond silicon dioxide and graphite knowing that they've got a high melting and boiling points and you need to be able to look into them and see um, their the structure of their basic units so car diamond has one carbon bonded to four other carbons whereas graphite is in layers and it has one carbon bonded to three other carbons you might see as well as giant covalent structures the word macromolecule um, and that just is the same as saying it's a giant covalent structure so macro being a large a molecule so this is a little bit of extra information about graphite for anyone taking the higher tier and you need to think first of all that idea about intermolecular forces again you can see those represented by um, weak lines here or dashed lines here they are weak intermolecular forces that exist between the layers of graphite so really strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms but weak intermolecular forces between the layers and that allows the layers of graphite to slide over each other. Also what you might have noticed is that the carbon as we discussed is bonded with three other carbons but carbon is in group four of the periodic table. The carbon is in group four and you should know by now that the group number tells you how many electrons there are in the outer shell so carbon is in group four and it will have four electrons in its outer shell so if it is covalently bonded with three other carbons it is going to be sharing one, two, three. It is going to be sharing three of its electrons with three other carbon atoms. Now this makes the properties of graphite really interesting because as you'll notice it now has one electron here which is not bonded to anything and this electron is allowed to freely move we call it this electron a delocalized electron it's not involved I haven't drawn the extra um, electrons here because it goes into a giant structure but it hasn't been involved in the bonding to other carbons it's therefore free on its own and it's actually allowed to move through the structure just in the same way that um, free electrons or delocalized electrons in metals are allowed to move. Graphite is similar in this respect because it has a delocalized electron. And this allows graphite, just like metals, to conduct heat and electricity. because of that de delocalized electron being allowed to move through the structure that gives graphite a special property of being able to conduct electricity so that would mean if you sharpened both ends of your pencil and connected it to an electric circuit you would see um, that the graphite in your pencil would be able to conduct electricity and for example turn on a lamp or a small motor or something like that so how you are able to remember this 
property of graphite, I'll write this out, is really to be start looking at the structure, noticing, for example, the smaller units that one carbon is bonded to three others, and thinking to yourself, well, hang on, carbon's in group four, therefore it must have a spare electron which is doing something else. And in this case, it is.